Nation, how you guys doing this fine Tuesday afternoon? Uh, we've gone over a lot of stuff in the previous uh, episodes, and tonight we have our player personnel director and the head of the Med Scout team, Mr. Ronnie Lamon. Ronnie, what's up, man? Nothing, buddy. How you doing, man? Doing good. You just get back from practice? Yeah, I just got done at the facility. Uh, just just walked in the door maybe about three minutes ago. All right. Um, you know, we, me and Jordan Ostroff did a uh, podcast about travel ball the other day, so I wanted to stay on that topic a little. And uh, why don't you give us uh, insight on your travel ball program? Tell us about it. Yeah, no worries, Chris. Um, I did hear that podcast, and uh, definitely – there was some very valid points in, in what was said. Um, you know, I don't really, I guess I don't consider my program necessarily a travel ball program. Uh, of course, you know, with, with me being with NLI also, uh, it's uh, a recruiting, um, it's a program that, that teaches kids the process. Uh, we do play tournaments, but with that in mind, we are putting kids out there uh, with the right idea of how to be recruited. We only carry one team per age group. We're not here to put multiple teams in, uh, in events. We're here to focus on each team individually and the kids within that team so that they can get the proper attention and uh, be directed the right way to, to help the recruiting, uh, you know, the recruiting process. Yeah, no, absolutely. You guys definitely do it right. Um, there's a lot of attention paid to every individual player in your program and uh i commend you guys for that you guys have a lot of heart and you play your uh, cojones off yeah i mean we try to we try to um you know of, of course with our program it's a 3.0 to be able to even play in our program if they don't i don't care what the talent level is you know my ideation and thoughts are that if you can't carry a 3.0 you're probably not going to be able to handle everything within uh, you know, the, the collegiate baseball program, you know, with the academics and everything that it entails. No, absolutely. So I got a question for you. Um, sure. I know what my most important factor is when I'm scouting at a game or at, at a tournament. So in, in your opinion, for you individually, when you're scouting a player, whether that's considering bringing him, him into the Met scout team or trying to get him on board with NLI scouting, What's the most important factor that you look at in a possible recruit? Uh, you know, it's, it's funny because I, I use the term bulldog um, and I use it. We have a 12 year old team too, which, uh, you know, in our program, which is younger. And even if I go out there and talk to those boys, you know, you, you, you always want that bulldog. You want the guy that's going to just never want to fail, whether it be in the classroom, on the baseball field, or whatever it is in life. They want to be a go-getter, and they want to they want to do everything everything they can to to achieve their goal. Um, so I, I guess I, I watch really the the effort, um, the the way they interact with teammates when they're on the field, um, but you know, doing things the right way, handling themselves as mature young men and dealing with failure because there's going to be a lot more failure in this game than there is going to be success as we know. So, so watching their emotions when they do fail, I'd rather see a guy's emotions when they fail than when they succeed because pretty much everyone we see when they succeed are, you know, it's all good and cheering and picking kids up and whatnot. But, but when you fail, uh, that's when you really know what that person's like. Absolutely. Absolutely. When we're looking at recruits, let's just stick to NLI scouting it's to be assumed that they have the skill set that's projectable to some level of college baseball. Uh, but I'm with you. I'm looking at the kid's mental makeup. That's my most important factor that I'm looking at. Um, I'd rather see a kid who I know is projectable, but the game I'm watching him, he goes over three with three K's. I, I'd like to see that rather than him go three for three. Cause I want to see how he handles that. Yeah, and then if you watch, if you're able to catch that game where he went over three, and maybe he has that next game, and you you see how he approaches his his plate appearances in the next game, if he's left that you know the game before, left it with the game before, and if he's a, if he's coming out pumped up to play again, or is he just got his head down coming to the next game, 
you know, you, you know, being a coach and, and running programs, I mean, there's definitely guys in my program that, you know, you'll, that I'll see that, that, that do that, you know, and you, you learn, you know, when we pick these kids up in tryouts and, and we go through this, we don't know those kids necessarily. We may have heard of those kids names and, and whatnot, but until you actually have them on your team, you learn a lot about them. And, you know, we don't, we don't always pick the right guys either, you know, when we, when we do this and as far as, you know, with our scout team program, but uh, we, we do pretty well with what we pick. You do. You guys have some uh, good pro talent in that program for sure. Um, before this call, I was on a, uh, another Zoom call with Cornell University. They were actually interviewing me about what we look for uh, similar to this conversation. And uh, they were focusing on the uh, saber metrics or the you know technology part of the baseball. So my question to you is, how much credence do you give uh, uh, Rap Soto data and stuff? Is yeah. that more important than your eyeball test? I mean, you know, the thing is, is I just I feel everything can be used and it's it's an asset. So if you have everything, but at the end of the day, the kid's got to be able to play. Uh, the first thing and foremost is, you know, is, is does that kid have the skill set that that's needed to play at the next level? OK, um, you know, of course, what is his grade? What are his grades? What is his attitude? Um, but then once you you find that out, I mean, definitely, you know, we use Rap Soto in our program. We have the pitching and we have the hitting and and that data, you know, we'll use that and these kids will see that and we'll try to um, take those numbers and those metrics and increase those and you know try some different things and and these kids love to see themselves you know uh in video and when you when you show them the video with the metrics in it it, it is it is definitely something that is valuable for sure yeah no doubt no doubt and i think it's a good compliment you know you got to look at the whole ball of wax with your eyeballs and with uh, the data that we're lucky enough to be able to uh, evaluate on a consistent basis now at the amateur level. When you understand it all and you, you, you learn how to, to use those, um, those metrics and what those all mean. I mean, a lot of people will talk, you know, they go into the launch angle and they talk about this and that. And, you know, I mean, a lot of people think, you know, launch angle is just hitting home runs. I mean, that's just the angle here in the baseball. So at the end of the day, not every kid wants to have the same launch angle. We don't even talk about launch angle first off and foremost, but if we were to talk about those numbers, you know, it's uh, that, that data, we may use different terms with them and to show them, but at the end of the day, not everybody's going to have the same. You're not going to want to do it the same way as, as another guy. You might not be built to do it that way. Right. right. You could have a six four guy. Correct. Maybe a uh, launch angle might be a little more important than a five eight middle infielder. Right. That that has no. You know, really, maybe if he if he if he gets into one or runs into one, you know, he might get get one out. But it's not something that he needs to be focused on. You know, he's more of a you know. Uh, uh, focusing on, you know, middle backside or whatnot and, right. and understanding how to use his strengths. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I know you and I agree on this topic, but I want your perspective so the viewers that watch us uh, twice a week on YouTube, and if you're not, hit that subscribe button, guys. We, we give you good stuff. So I want your viewpoint on this. Um, how important is it for the recruit to be proactive in his own recruiting process? Oh man, today it's even more important than, than ever. I mean, that's the biggest thing that, that we do, not only within LI, but even within, within the Met Scout Team program is, you know, we, we, we basically, you know, I drive the bus, these kids are on the bus, and uh, hopefully, you know, with me driving the, the bus, they're, they're actually, you know, on the bus to learn, you know. I can't do everything for them. Um, I can only drive the bus and guide them. They have to actually, you know, put in the work, but, but we give them that information and it's up to them to utilize that. But I mean, these kids definitely need to be using video with, with what's going on. They need to get it out as much as possible. They need to be accurate with the, with the data that they're giving them and, you know, don't inflate anything because you will be exposed. And that's the last thing you want to do is be exposed for something that's not true. Um, but uh, you know, reaching out to coaches, uh, letting them know when you're going to camps, you know, just, just be on top of your stuff. If a coach replies to you, or, you know, if you're, if you are, you know, a 2021 right now and coaches are 
you know, replying to you, make sure you get right back to them, show them your interest. It's, it's just like being on the ball field, man. You got to be a bulldog at, at the recruiting process too. And you got to take that just as serious as you do with playing the game. Yeah. I love that. You know, I haven't heard that before, but you do have to be, have that bulldog mentality with typing on this computer that I'm looking at you through right now and being consistent with that every day have to be. You know, the thing is, too, is just like we talk about failures on the baseball field or maybe a failure on a test in a classroom. I mean, there's going to be failures with your recruiting process, too. You may be you, you, you might think, you know, this 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 dude's all over me. He loves me. You know, he's he's you know, and, and you may, may get letdowns. And, and how are you going to battle through that to find the perfect fit? Because not everything is going to be golden through the recruiting process. And it, it's up to you to be a bulldog again. And and eventually you'll find the right fit. and that could be Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA, JUCO. It, it it it's finding the right fit. Absolutely, not everyone's a D one guy. Matter of fact, most are not. Uh, we 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 we've got players that are actually uh, named after D one. We call them D one, then their first name when we when they got D one itis. So we we know all about that. But uh, it's it's my job to be realistic with my players, and the same thing with NLI is that. We're, we're going to be honest with you. We're going to tell you what we see. Now, are we 100% right all the time? Absolutely not. But, but I'll definitely give you my input and, you know, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll guide you in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, just like Josh uh, Elander from Tennessee t- told me about scouts, you're a good scout if you're right more than you're wrong. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> you know, and, and there's always, you know, you and I root for the guys that I tell that they're not going to do something because, you know, I would love for that guy to come back up to me and tell me that I'm wrong. You know, I'll shake his hand and say, man, I'm proud of you. You know, you proved me wrong. You, you know, and that that kid must have worked his tail off or done something special because we're pretty good at what we do. And um, we can pretty much evaluate talent, you know, to the next level for sure. Yeah, yeah no doubt for sure. But I know one thing that we're absolutely 100 percent accurate on. And that is we know who's projectable and we know what makes them not projectable, which includes not being a bulldog in the classroom. That's it. You know? No doubt about it, man. And, and these days, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, so, it's even more important uh, to, to be a high academic guy and get those grades because, you know, that's where the money's going to come from. And, and even more today than it's ever been is academics are, I can't stress that enough to the, to the parents and the players. Well, yeah, especially this coming year, because normally in D1 baseball, you're allotted a minimum of what we call a quarter, 25% athletic money, but that is not the case for this coming year. It could be less and will be less for the minimum. Yeah, there's there's a, a lot going on, and it's, you know, the thing is, is things change, you know, very often, if not daily, with everything, um, so it's it's – it's challenging sometimes to keep up with everything, but, but, you know, the NCAA, they change things and, and, and things are probably going to change a lot more before it's all said and done. Yeah. None of us have the answers right now because it's changing on a daily basis. So we just got to be fluid and be patient with the process. And, you know, that's the one thing I tell my guys, I got two text messages today. I won't tell everyone the coach's names, but they both said the same thing. We are just starting our 21 class right now because we all know what's going on. Yeah, and, and, and I hear the same, same type of thing. And, you know, they want to see the guy on the field. But the one thing that they want is that they want good quality video so that they can really try to separate the guys that they need to get to the field to see. Because when it opens up, they're definitely going to be there when that happens. Um, but they want to see the guys play live. But they continually tell me, look, get me – as much quality video of the guy you can so I can put it in his file and, and they'll tell that to my athletes also. And, and that way they can separate, you know, the guys that they want to see. Um, it, it'll start to separate you if you're given good quality video. Yeah, no, absolutely. And as you know, there, there are some programs that are making offers on video only, not absolutely. all, but there are some. Yes. I just heard of one this, the other day that, uh, uh, got an offer um, from being at a tournament that was a live stream and that was a position player. So it's, it's, that's not that <laughs> it's starting to happen a little bit. They don't, I know they don't like to do that. I wouldn't want to do it that way either, but no. you know, they've got to, they've got to fill those rosters too. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, Ron. Well, I think we covered some good info tonight. What do you think? 
Hey, man, love talking to you all the time, Chris, man. Appreciate it. Um, you know, we, we definitely take pride in what we do. Um, I know you and I talk often, and uh, these kids that have the opportunity to have guidance in the recruiting process, uh, I can't tell you how uh, valuable that is for them to be able to play at the next level, especially this day and age. They, they are truly taken care of, and hopefully they all appreciate it as we – we know uh, most of them do, but uh, definitely valuable. Yeah, well, you know, we, we take this, this is our career, and we take pride in it, and hopefully everyone else appreciates that for sure. So, Ron, I appreciate it, and I will see you on August 22nd at your tryouts for the Met Scout team. Yes, sir, let's do it, man. Let's do it. All right, you have a good night, and NLI Nation, hit that subscribe button if you aren't listening to us twice a week. Ron. Definitely do so. Definitely do so. <laughs> All right, yes, man. Sir. Take care. All right, brother. See you, man.